Let's pray. Father God, we humble ourselves and we bless you, we glorify you, we worship you, we praise you. Father God, I need you to have your way today. Oh, Father, let your word come forth. Right now, we humble ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask that your will be done. Please let your will be done. All of you, none of me, I decrease and pray that you might increase right now. Oh, God, your people, we need you. We need you more than we need any man, more than we need ourselves. We need you. So please, God, just have your way. Bless your people. Open up ears so we might hear. Open up eyes so we might see. And open up hearts so we might understand. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the word go forth. Let it not return to you void. It can't return to you void. But Father God, let it not fall to the ground. It can't fall to the ground because you're God. It will do exactly what you sent it to do. We trust you. Amen. 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 I want to tell you something, share something with you. You know, we are always asking God. The Bible says ask. It's important to ask God. And then it's important to expect God to answer me, to help me, to work things out for me. This is what I've learned is that sometimes in our asking, we are not willing to do what's required. And so it seems like our prayers are not being answered. Or we're not willing to understand that God doesn't do things on our timing. And so it seems like our prayers, I don't believe God would have asked me to ask if he didn't want me to ask. Get that. Amen? Amen. 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 I don't think God would have said to me, Michael asked me if he didn't want me to. You guys come down for me. Can you come down? I need you to come down. Just for me. Just for today. I don't think he would have asked me to ask because I got to get this word to you and I keep looking around. I want to preach to you and preach to everybody. But but get this in your spirit and then I'm going to go right into it. I don't think that God play games with us. I don't think God deceives us. I don't think God asks us to do anything that don't work. But we have to ask understanding the conditions. Amen? Amen. The conditions. Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters, I've learned? We have a tendency to get very frustrated and defeated when we feel that God is not answering our prayers. We feel as though, I mean, it can really take you through a change. A change. It can take you through a, a, a change. It can make you, it can mess with your faith. It can mess with your confidence in God. And then what we'll do is we'll try to find other ways and then say, God answered my prayer. Can I, can I share something with you? God is God. He's sovereign. And he don't answer prayers any other way than his way. Amen. Amen. Now hear me, even from the pulpit, we have a tendency just to set, try and satisfy souls at times to compromise the word. Amen. Well, I have no intentions on compromising the word Amen. today. Amen. Amen. Amen? I believe that if we could get the word, then we can get what God is actually saying and we can see the blessings. Uh, God said something that was amazing. He said, choose this day. Life or death. Blessings or curses. It's always a choice, and it's a daily choice. Amen? But I'm interested in what Jesus said over in Matthew chapter 7. Can you go there with me? Chapter 7, Matthew. I want you to look at this with me very quickly. And you know, this is still a part of the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, he was giving how our attitudes, he was trying to help us to, to be how we should be as children of God because he understood we did not understand, we did not know. And I'm going to jump down because if you look at the whole chapter, I mean, he's, he's talking about a lot of different things, but it all comes together as one. Amen? It all comes together as one. But I'm, verse, I'm interested in verse 7. I'm going to give you some verses here today. Then we'll elaborate just briefly, and then we'll be done. Amen? He said in verse 7, Ask, everybody reach that way? And it shall be, Ask, comma, 
Think about it. Stop. Think. Then he completes it. He says, and connects the thought. When you ask, it shall be given you. You see that? Seek, you shall what? Find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Now here's verse 8. He says, for every one that asks, receives. And he that seeketh find, and to him that knock, it shall be what? Open. Amen. 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 Get that. Read that. Think about that. Amen. It's amazing. But there's a, there's a thought behind it. it. When he talks about asking, the thought behind it is to keep on asking. <laughs> Hear this. Now, now I, I get it, I think, in partiality, and I want to get it more. But the thought is to keep on asking. Uh, a lot of people have been told you don't have to keep asking God for something. Well, Jesus didn't say that. Jesus, even, he even used a, a parable about this judge and this woman went and disturbed him and she kept disturbing him. He said, you know what, I don't fear your God. I don't fear anything. I'm giving you your request because you have worried me. Amen. The thing about it is, see, we don't worry God. But I found out something. In this asking, there is a need to adjust my position. Amen. Hear that. In my asking God, there, is, there should be seeking God to change my position. Whatever it might be, which is in opposition to God. To change my position, which is in opposition to God. See, God, if he, if he has in his word, ask. Jesus, the real writing represents what the writer said, Jesus said. So if he says, ask, and it shall be, one question I must ask myself, is he talking to me? Hear me, because you ever ask God for something that don't work? So I have to ask myself, is he talking to me? Who is he talking to? Well, he's talking to people that believe in him because the crowd had gathered around him and they had gathered around him because they believed. Like, you're gathered here today. You believe in him. So he's talking to people, first of all, that believe in him. Amen. Now, to say I believe in Jesus and to live I believe in Jesus can be two different scenarios. See, what I say must line up in what I do with what I do. So what is the evidence that I believe in Jesus? Well, first of all, I've accepted him as Lord of my life. I believe that he is the son of God. I believe what he did on the cross paid the price for my sins. I believe when he got up, he gave me eternal life. So I believe that he has done everything for me to have a right relationship with God. He has done everything for me to be properly adopted into the family of God as a child of God. So I act like it. How do you act like that, though? You, you do what he did. You pray all the time in hopes that you are pleasing God. That's one thing. What did I say do? We pray all the time in hopes that we are pleasing God. Now, prayer, remember, is hearing from God more than it is telling God. So we got to act like, how do, I, how, do I, how do I act? If he says ask and he's talking to me, he's talking to the child of God. He's talking to one who claims God to be their father through Christ Jesus. The next thing I have to do is I have to respect God, the Father, as Jesus respected him. Jesus says something. He, he was getting ready to go to the cross. It's amazing. And uh, he, he looked, I'm sure he looked at all the sin, but he looked at the separation because he had to carry the sin. He had to carry the sin. He had to get it away from God. He had to deal with it. Because he, he took down the wall of petition, remember? So another way that we can show our act, act like him is that we have to be like him when he said, Father, uh, not my will. Because you remember when he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, life got real heavy. And I think sometimes when we're asking God, we're asking God higher than our pay grade, higher than our understanding. Because I believe when he was in that, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was talking to the Father, and the Bible said he sweated as though, I think he dealt with his flesh. He dealt with his will. 
See, when you're asking God to help you, to bless you, to work your life out, you must be willing to deal with your will. Because you cannot take for granted that we as human beings, created beings, our will conflicts with God sometimes. Amen. David made it plain. He said, you know, I was born in sin and I was shaped in iniquity, Father. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 7, he said, I will to do certain things and I find in my flesh something else going on. Amen. So I, we have the tendency to be against God when we say we're for God. Sometimes, sometimes we have to think about how, how, how did, and I'm talking about when we ask God, what all did he do to get through this old mean world? One thing I realized, he forgave folk consistently. I give an example. There was a time when they came to get him, and Peter didn't want him to go anywhere, so he cut the man's ear off. In the midst of them taking Jesus, Jesus puts the man's ear back on. So you gotta act like him. You can't, you can't, you gotta love your enemies and pray for those who despitefully use you. Amen. That's, that's when you're asking God to do his amazing, his unprecedented. That's when you're asking God to be God all by himself. That's when you're asking God to do a miracle that nobody else can do. To make a way that cannot be made any other way. Amen. To heal in a way that nobody else can heal. You have to act like a child. You have to accept. Next thing you have to do is you have to accept God's answer. Amen. Hear me. See, sometimes God's answer is yes. Sometimes God's answer is maybe. Sometimes God's answer is nothing. He don't say a mumbling word. Why would he not say anything? Because when Jesus was praying, remember, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was talking to the father and he said this, he said after he had broke his wheel because when, when the Bible talks about he sweated as though it was blood, he was breaking his, he was breaking his flesh he broke his wheel Jesus broke his own wheel he got up and he stayed there until his wheel was broken but this is what got me while he was praying I never heard God answer How did he conclude that it was the Father's will for him to go forward? They had something going before he got to earth. They had, they had a relationship before Jesus. See, see God created us in his image and his likeness. If you can never get back to that place where you had something going on with him before you ever come through your mother and your daddy's body, then you realize that, oh my God. See, God is, see God is greater. His purpose is greater than ours. So I looked at it and I, and I read it and I studied it and he, he said, Father, take this, take this cup. He said it one time. He said, Father, he said, he said, he said take, take this cup. He said, be your will. Listen at the prayer. He said, this, 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 this is how we do God too now. Listen. If it be your will, take this cup. Get this now. Hear it, hear it again. If it be your will, take this cup. We're asking God. Listen now. So, so if God don't take the cup of suffering, sometimes we get disappointed and lose our confidence in God. That's why Jesus stayed down on his face. That's why he came out to the disciples and went back. He, he refused to let anybody interfere with that prayer. He came out to them. He said, look, can't y'all stay awake for a minute or two? Because he was anxious and he was hurting and he was challenged. Sometimes we get anxious, we get hurt, we, we're challenged. But see, sometimes... God's will is not just about you. Sometimes it's about your family coming out. Sometimes it's about you not being able to see, why do I stay in this horrible marriage? But it ain't so horrible because God got a purpose of bringing up a generation that's going to glorify him. Even though you guys had to suffer on the baseline, you, you don't realize how far you came up just by being obedient to the relationship. So he don't explain it to you why you need to stay. But while you're staying, there are things happening for the good. So see, Jesus' purpose was great, much bigger than his emotional state at that moment. See, emotionally, he was like, God, Father, I've never, ever been separated from you in totality. I've never, ever, 
ever, I can't take that, I don't want to take that chance, Father. I can imagine every time he thought about it, it made him sick. But he had, he had a reason for coming. See, everybody in here, you've got a reason for living. Amen. But you need God to help us. We need to ask him to help us. We need to say, God, I don't know my way right now. I don't understand my call. I don't understand my purpose. But help me. Because, see, your purpose could be laying down on your face and everybody seems like they're just doing whatever they want to do. Sometimes it's, it's, you don't under... See, when you ask God, you have to ask him important questions. What do you want to do now? What are your plans for the day? Will you use me, please? Whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. Please, Father God, help me today. Amen. Be glorified through me. So those are the questions you have to ask because when you do that, then things are added to your life. Amen. Blessings come. The family lines up. It might not line up like you want it to, but it'll line up. See, what God will do is he'll start saving folk and delivering folk and setting folk free. But this Jesus, he was, he was in a place and Told his disciples, he said, I want you to pray now. Let me tell you, when you ask God something, sometimes people will faint before you get your answer. They'll faint before you get your answer because they say want to use them for you to give up. Amen. He liked to use them. And you'll be like, oh, nobody got any more interest. And if you ain't careful, he'll get you to lose interest. Amen. But can I tell you something? God still has interest. Let me show you what I mean by that. See, the disciples could not stay awake. Hear me, they love Jesus, but they couldn't stay awake. See, sometimes you can have people you think going to be with you, but they can't stay awake. Why? Because it's between you and God. See, God don't need nobody but himself to answer a hard prayer, a hard request. But the trouble is, we, 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 we sometimes give up too fast. We give up too soon or we're not willing to change. See, 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 the reason I mentioned to you that he said, Father, take this cup from me if it be your will, because he was willing to change. See, he wanted the cup taken away. He was asking the Father to take it away. But listen, he had to be willing to change, but he couldn't just change because it was too devastating what he was facing. Think about Abraham. He told Abraham, he said, I want you to offer up your son. The Bible say Abraham didn't even talk to Sarah. You know why he didn't talk to Sarah? Because he knew Sarah would have whooped his way. No, I'm joking. I'm not joking. That slipped in. That slipped in. That slipped in. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. She have fought him tooth and nail. What? Do what? And I had this baby at a hundred. Boy, you better. I will. But I'll cut your neck before you take it. All I went through to hell. And you going to what? It's some things I learned that you can't tell nobody God tell you to do. Some things, there's a woman and she had a boy and the prophet of God had come to her house and she had put a room on her house because she loved the man of God and she loved God. And he said, what can I do for you? She said, I don't need anything. She said, he said, can I speak to the king? She said, I don't need anything from the king. Hear this. He said, have you had, do you, do you have children? Do you? She said, no. Mind you, she had already put a room so it was hard for her to even imagine having a child. I guess, I guess she had gotten to a point we can get to a point where we don't even ask God no more. Because all the factors came together as she ain't going to have no baby. Some things are too hard for us. But they're only hard because we don't ask God. The Bible says she didn't ask for nothing, but he said to her by this time, you're going to have a baby. She said, don't get my hopes up. She, her hopes were, she was already, she was okay. It hurt her. She wanted the baby, but while she was helping the man of God, God gave her the desires of her heart. She wasn't even talking about the desires anymore. Amen. She went to her husband. She said, can, I, can we please just put him in a little room and a little light and make sure his journey is a little easier. But she didn't even ask. She had given up. She hadn't even asked. Well, the Bible says she went on and she had the baby on time. But the scripture goes on and it says that the baby died. The baby died. The baby had a headache. He was looking at the daddy. He went to the mama. The mama didn't tell the daddy the baby was dead. She went straight to the man of God. 
She said, now you told me. And he said, it's hidden. Get this. Man of God says, hidden from me. Because his servant was getting ready to take her out as she approached the man of God. He says, hidden from me. Don't touch her. She came in and she had a little conversation. He went on. He went on. And he got there. Listen to this. Now, she didn't ask for the baby. Look at what all she went through once she had the baby. What was God doing in our asking? He was getting us back to him. Amen. Getting our confidence anchored in him. Amen. See, see, nothing really matters because God can do anything and everything. Amen. It don't matter. As long as you got him. The Bible says she, he went on in and he laid on the boy. Don't God do things in strange ways? Laid on the boy. She had to walk in the room. She'd be like, get off my child now. Something going on here that's not of God. See, God, glory to God. Sometimes God will work in a way that don't make sense to you. He'll, he'll work in a way that don't make, listen to me, somebody. You got this. When you're asking God for something, you got to be willing for God to do it his way. Because the way God does it is the only way it can be done. The baby lived. The baby lived. The baby lived. Ain't that amazing? But there's so many testimonies of the faithfulness of God in here and in here. But think about it. Let's just go back to this now. He says, he says and this is, this is the thought. He said, ask. He said, and it will be or shall be what? Given, right? That's a promise. Is that a promise? Shell is always a promise. He said, ask, but you got to be ready for God's answer. Because remember, you're asking God who knows what's best. And it ain't no joke. It's not a TV show. It's real. He really does know what's best. Amen. Then, then listen, you have to be willing to receive his answer. So he said, ask, verse 7. He said, ask. Chapter 7, verse 7. He said, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, you shall find it. Knock shall be open for everyone that asks receive and he that he that seeketh find and so it's ongoing are you listening to me so he gets into this so he shifts in the next verse he said oh, what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread shall he give a what stone or if he asks fish he'll give him a serpent now get this in your spirit See, God don't always give you what you ask for because you don't know what you're asking for. Sometimes we don't know what we're asking for. So we think we do. But what we're asking for can hurt us. Anybody listening to me? It can destroy us. As many stirs about people seem like they were blessed and next thing you know, somebody killed them for it. He said, if you, he said now if you then been evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, get this in your spirit, you ready? What does he say? How much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to who? Them that ask. But he's talking to the children of God because he said your father in heaven. Now everybody, listen to this. When you're asking God, you have to be willing to work on what God is concerned about. You listen. I say it again. Please hear me by the Spirit of God. Because Jesus said, whoever keep my commandments. What is this commandments? He said, you can lay everything on this one, that you love. That you love one another. He said, you can hang everything on it. First, you got to love the Father with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. He said, then you got to love your neighbor as yourself. He said, you can take all the commandments. and lay. That's powerful. That's powerful. He didn't make it hard. He didn't give you a whole lot of laws. Do you know a lot of people try to keep you in bondage? call it low level bondage because they are Pharisees in this time they're still under the law do you know that the Bible literally says all things get this now all things I'm free to do but all things are not good for me they're not expedient but I'm, not, I'm no longer under bondage so when I, when I listen this is the thing when you're asking the best way is to start confessing because if you don't confess your sins, there's no communication with God. 
See, a lot of people think I can just ask God because I go to church. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Uh, either they can say I ask God, I can ask God because he loves me. No, 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 no. You got to love him too. Because there's no relationship. See, see, God don't just give you things. That, like if you say, God, I need a car. God ain't going to give you no car to heaven. It won't drive on earthly streets. Amen. It'll test something up. But what God will do is he'll give you wisdom and understanding and favor and move you by his spirit Amen. into the right place at the right time so you can have what he wants you to have. Now, now in Psalm 37 and 4, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord. Get this. Psalm 37 and 4. Let me see. Can we get that? 37 and 4. Psalms 37 and 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall what? What is the word? What does it mean, delight myself? Take pleasure in who he is. Take pleasure in loving him. Take pleasure in being faithful to him. Take pleasure in being committed to him. I found out something. It's not those who are perfect that God is talking to because none of us are. None of us are. But you know, God don't want you to stress about your sins. It's, so, it's some people got you in such bondage. You did this, that's why God ain't answering your prayer. You did that, that's why God ain't answering your prayer. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. What God really wants is for us to seek him continuously. Stay faithful to him. Stay committed to him. Stay dedicated to him. He don't want us condemned, feeling bad about, because Jesus came to what? Take away our sins. The more you meditate on your sin, the more you're going to do them. And it keeps your asking in vain. But the more you say, because of Jesus Christ, I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. I've been forgiven for my sins according to the word of God. Therefore, I can ask God, well, you have to confess. You have to agree with God when you find sin in your being. You have to agree like, God, that is sin. You have to be honest. God said, you must worship me in spirit and in truth. You have to be honest. You cannot overlook it. And you remember I talked about last week, you cannot change God's truth. When you, when you deal, when you interact with God, you got to tell God, you got to go God with his truth, like, God, I'm wrong. This is where your victory is. Somebody need victory. You, you could be harboring something in your heart against somebody and you're so religious that you think because you can speak to them it's all right. No, it's stopping your blessing. How is it stopping my blessing? Because you're, it's stopping the connection. You remember Jesus said this. He said, look. He said, now you can, you can speak to the mountain. You can tell it to be removed. You can pray and you can see miracles happen. He said, but let me tell you what you got to do. You got to forgive. He said, if you don't forgive, God don't forgive you. So when you don't forgive, it breaks the relationship. Listen. A lot of people walk around judging other people. Amen. Paul wrote, said, don't you judge folk. Wait till Jesus come and let him do that. Amen. Love folk. See, when you love folk, what, what you, you look at them how they are and you realize if they need changing, I need to take my eyes off of them. Because how I want them to change might not be how God wants them to change. Amen. And it's hard You'll be surprised at how in the house with families, and I always talk about families because I love families, but ought exist and stop the plan of God. Anybody hear that? Listen to me, please. Ought. You know, that's where you pick at each other. Always find a fault. Despise each other because they, they got a weakness. Hear me. You, you despise them. I can't stand him. He won't even pick them socks up. He's so nasty. <laughs> I started to react to that. That's all. See, that's what, the, that's what the flesh does. We say the devil. The devil don't have omnipresence. He's not everywhere at all times. Man was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. All by himself, he can mess himself up. Amen. All by himself. None of us are perfect. Amen. So we got flesh that wars against spirit. Sometimes flesh wins. So we're asking God, we're asking God, we're asking God, but we're not delighting ourselves in the Lord. Because to delight ourselves in the Lord is to see folk like God see them. You want the socks picked up? Pick them up. Hear me in love. 
Don't think about it no more. When your mind, the, the Bible said, take every thought into captivity. When your mind, to keep you out of argument, the Bible said, live peace, in peace with all men if possible. Amen. It's a pair of socks. Amen. Go ahead and whisper in the ear sometimes. Say, you need to pick up your own sock now. Till you wash the dishes every now and then. <laughs> whisper, whisper. Don't be ready to fight. I'm, I'm just talking about little things that's keeping your asking from not happening. Little things that you don't pay attention to. Every day you do it. You walk in the house and you, you got somebody in the house and they, 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 get a, they got a drug problem and all you want them to do is get off those drugs. But you don't think all that food you eat is a drug problem. <laughs> America's gotten bigger than she's ever been. Because we are deceived. See, everybody got a problem. Put your mind on your own. Work out your own soul salvation. Then your asking will work. Amen. If you could, if you could hear this, I'm done. I'm not, I'm not going to stick around. I got, I got a few more scriptures, but I'm not going to stick around long. If you could hear this, it's going to bless you. Think about the person you pick on the most. Like, listen. I mean, let's say, let's say if, if it's your child. Let's, let's say you're a single mother or a single dad. And the child do a million things right. The one thing they do wrong, you keep it for three weeks. You know, last week, you showed out in school. And I, I, I still don't appreciate that. <laughs> Hear me, that's alt. You're picking on the child. You pick, hear me in love now. You want them to do better, pray for them. A child needs prayer too. Cast out the unclean spirit. Lay hands on. Do you know if your, your home is clean, your child go to school, they're going to pick up some dirty spirits. Unclean spirits love clean places. They transfer. So all of a sudden, somebody comes in the house and they're acting funny. You need to get the dump. The dump. So your prayers, your asking will work. God said, Jesus said, don't, don't hurt the little children. He said, if you're going to hurt the little children, you might as well tie a millstone around your neck and jump in the water and die. He said, because I got their backs. I know, I know we, but I'm just telling you the truth Amen. about this asking. It's a lot of believers live in bondage and lack and need because you're wrestling with the wrong thing. You're wrestling with the wrong thing. You're fighting over the wrong thing. James wrote, you know, there's fighting amongst you asking. You have not because you ask a missed. You missed the point. So you need to be, everything that God brings into your life need to glorify God. You need to be willing to share. And you know what? She ain't, um, she don't, she don't want to help me. I ain't giving her nothing. I ain't, uh -uh, I ain't giving her, I ain't going to give her a dime. She can forget that cuz. And he ain't, nah, I ain't telling him nothing about my account cuz you, well, you got, your asking is messed up. Cuz you won. Hear me, I'm blessing somebody. I ain't going, I ain't going, and then you, I ain't going to tell him, uh uh. No, I ain't going. God will say, be nice. Go in there and just, just, just give him a hug. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You'll do everything else but what God asks you to do. Go to sing it in vain. Loud. It sounds like the devil. Irritate everybody in the house. You're asking. See, we have to humble ourselves and let the Holy Spirit manifest the ways and the will of God in order for our asking. How do we do that? We yield to him. See, he's alive in us. He's a third person of the Trinity. He lives and he's in us. Jesus, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to go to the Father and he's going to send you another helper. The Holy Spirit is in us to help us, teach us the ways of God. And all we have to do is yield. How do we know we're yielding right? Because it lines up with the word. The Holy Spirit never goes outside of the word. And you can't create no word and say God said it and the Holy Spirit helping you. Amen. Amen. So we have to yield to the Holy Spirit. But our asking should not be in vain because of the promises. Matthew 18, 19. He said, I t and again, I tell you, Truly, that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Jesus. That was Matthew 18, 19. Can you put that up for me? 18, there it is. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them 
by my father. You got to be in agreement. How are you going to grab somebody you was cussing out last night and you hadn't even asked them to forgive you and you want to be in agreement today? Are you rolling your eyes at? And you need them now. Where you at? You better come on. I miss you. Now, you don't miss them. You need some help. I hadn't talked to you in so long. How you doing, mama? Been mad at her for a while because she wouldn't give you the rent money. How you doing, mama? I'm all right, baby. How you doing? She know you need something. Talk to her mean and nasty. You think, you're gonna, you think your ass going to get through? The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. So your days will be long on the earth. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But you need somebody to gather with you now and the person you know you've been mean to. You don't even apologize. You call them up and say, I need you to pray with me. <laughs> what about you just cussing out? You ain't even said nothing about that. That don't lead because Satan won't let it lead. You got to talk about what you did. Amen. Mama, I was wrong. I was really wrong to talk to you like that. Mean it. I should have done it. Cry hard. You need her prayers. Amen. <laughs> it's real. Talk to her nice. Go buy some. If you ain't got a five dollars, get us. Get our apple. Mama, look what I got. She might not eat it because she don't know what she didn't put in it, but she loved it, folks. <laughs> no, get us some flour. And you might, you know, I don't really like fake flowers, but if you have to get a fake one, get a fake one. Whatever you got to get to walk in the house, peace out. This is a peace offering. And then fall down all I'm so sorry. Because, listen, why are you going to call somebody you've been being mean to to pray with you? How that's going to work? That's what he's talking about. He said you can get two, two people to agree. You got to agree in love. That's why husbands and wives can't get prayers to. Why do you think I ask people to pray separate in here? I ask people to pray with somebody that's not a part of their family because a lot of times in the family the anointing is interrupted. From hurt, real hurt, disappointments, frustrations. But it don't have to be. We have to face it and tell God about it and let him deliver us. So he says this. Matthew 21 and 22. Watch this. Now, these are the conditions. He said two or more, but you got to be on the one. He's got to be in agreement. Now he says, if you believe, you will receive what you ask. There's a condition. Again, I say unto you that if two, and I want, I want Matthew 20, 21 and 22. Chapter 21 and 22. Chapter 21. And then verse 22. Verse 22. Chapter 21, verse, there it is. And all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing what? Now he added believing. What interrupts our faith? What interrupts our, un, what, what interrupts our belief? Sin. Unrepentant sin. Unrepentant sin. Unacknowledged sin. Unconfessed sin. It does. It interrupts our belief. So we, we want to believe. We want to ask one man said, Jesus, help my unbelief. I want to do two more. Can I do two more? Do Mark chapter 11, 24. I want to show you this. Let me go over there because I want to do a little more with Mark. I want to give you that point that I made earlier. Chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, 24. And then I'm going to be done here. I've got a couple more. One more. Two more. Mark 11. Let's start at 22. Can you put 22 up there for me? We'll go down. 22. Mark 11, 22. Mark 11. We're going to start at 22. Let me show you who he's talking to. The reason I want to go to 22 is because I want to show who he's talking to, okay? This is what he said. In 22, he said, um, And Jesus answering said unto them, what? Have faith in God. That's who he's talking to. He's talking to people who have faith in God. How do you get faith in God? By hearing. And hearing the word of God. Amen? So in Jesus' answer, said unto them, have faith in God. Now, do you know that you need a certain faith for a certain thing? If you don't read the word daily, you can run out of faith. Amen. Amen. Hear, hear me. Faith is fresh. The Bible said it coming. It coming. It's like, it's like, if you, if you, it's like you, you want to drive your car 
you know, and then you, you forget. One day I was riding and I was like, oh man, look at my gas hand. It started, you know, going all over and I didn't have many miles left and I was praying I could make it to the surf. I was about to run out. That's what we do in faith. See, sometimes we run out and we need to refill ourselves. We need to read the word again. So he says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, have who? Faith in God. God's ability to do. Next verse says that, 23 says, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. In his heart, that's a really heavy message there. People have doubt in their hearts because they have unresolved hurt in their hearts. It's already filled with their system of faith. You, you believe in punishing somebody else. You believe in getting even. You believe, you know, so, so you got to empty yourself of that. But anyway, so he goes on. He says, who don't doubt? He said, but shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he say. Give me the next verse, please. He, he said, therefore I say, what things shall you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. That's the promise again. Amen. What's the next verse say? Watch this. And when you stand praying, he said, now you, listen, he said, when you pray, you can have it. He said, but when you stand praying, when, listen, you can have it, but listen, when you don't forgive, you don't keep interfering with God answering your prayer. Your movement is going to be in opposition. Your thought patterns, when you don't forgive, it, it interferes with, you know, with us being able to line up with the word that God is giving us to go in the direction that he's ordained us to go in order to see the victory. Sin interrupts a lot of stuff. Amen? So if, 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 if un unforgiveness is, is an in-depth, ungodly thing, he said, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any. Any. It's, you, don't, you can't... Listen, God is... I, I, sometimes I sit back and I think about how powerful God is. And I'm always trying to find it in me what is stopping my prayers from being answered. And then, then when God gives me understanding, I have peace. But when you're wrestling with God over an issue, if you don't have peace, stay with God until you get peace. Because some things he won't do. Some things he have no desire to do. Some things you're not going to co co uh, convince him to do. Some things he's going to do. Are you hearing me? But you will know the difference. Because once you pray, peace will come in and you, it don't run across your mind anymore until God is ready to do something different with it. But unforgiveness keeps it on your mind even when God has already answered your prayer with a no. And then it causes you to compromise and try to get it done another way. Why? Sometimes you need to say, God, okay, what is it that I'm missing that this is not being answered? Well, he told Paul, he said, look, Paul prayed to him three times about a thorn he had. He said, Paul, let me tell you something. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. Right where you are, my grace, because I want you to stay humble. See, see, God's grace is favoring you where you are to keep you humble. Some, some things don't make no sense. I was trying to do a deal, and I was all in it and all in it. It didn't work. And I remember every time something didn't work, later God had something better. So I just let it go. Hear that by the Holy Spirit. Please, somebody. I, I thought it was a time. I thought it would work. I thought it would come together. But when it didn't come together, I asked God, I said, God, what do you want to do? Am I not? Am I missing you? What am I doing? What are we? He gave me peace. He never answered me. <laughs> I just understood that he was doing what he wanted to do, and it wasn't what I wanted him to do at that moment. But I'm still anticipating him doing whatever he wants to do. So I can hear that. Please, God, let him have that. So he says, if you have all against any, and that's very powerful. He said, he said you've got to forgive if you have all against any when you pray. He said that your father also, which is in heaven, so we can reconnect with you. See, his desires are, see, a lot of times, listen, please, Holy Spirit, now I got to get this out, guys, I'm done. A lot of times, you get in a whirlwind of defeat. A whirlwind of defeat. It's like everything around you, why they ain't like this? Why they ain't going this way? Why they ain't blah, 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 blah. Well, see, that means you're not spending enough time with God. Because the Bible literally says, in all you're getting, get understanding. Well, well, see, when Jesus wrestled in the Garden of Gethsemane, what he left there with was power and understanding. Power to let God's will be done and understanding that it is God's will. That's what you need. See, you, you get caught up in, you know, I'm not, you know, why, why is this happening to me? Why I can't get my breakthrough? Why my blessings? It ain't time. Because what God, if you can, see it's a training, always a training, when you find the diverse temptations, count it all joy. 
He said, your faith goes on trial. See, the higher up you go, the more your faith is tried. See, see, God finally got the lady to believing she could have the baby because she did what it took to have the baby. She had the baby. I talked about Mitch. So, so then, then the baby dies. So he's still building her faith in him. So when she did, she didn't go to her husband. She didn't go to nobody else. She went straight to the man. See, God wants you to come straight to him. He'll build your faith so every time you can come straight to him and get an understanding that he's doing what he want to do. So, so when he say out, he says, he, say, he talks about this unforgiveness. It's a hint. Listen to me. You have to check your own heart. The Bible says the heart is more deceitful than we even know. And God does not lie. You can't, you can't trust yourself, especially when you're emotionally involved or engaged. Can't trust it because the flesh is, is in opposition to the spirit. Mm, thank you. Oh, glory to God, somebody. There's a breakthrough here. There's a breakthrough. So you can't, you can't trust you. You can't trust. You, you got to trust God. You know, Jesus didn't ask the, ask the disciples, y'all think I need to go to the cross or not? You, you, you ever studied? He, he never asked. He did. Did he? Did he? He didn't ask him. He said, yeah, because it was too hard. They would have told him, go to a cross. Get him some food. He'd been in there praying a long time. Something wrong. Get him some water. He's talking about going there and being crucified. Amen. Jesus, you say some amazing things, brother. <laughs> we can't afford for you to leave now. The crowds have just begun to gather greater. See, see, people around you are concerned about the earthly environment, but God has, a, when you are unique and, 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 and called for a specific purpose, hell will try to destroy you before you can reach that purpose. Amen. 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 So when you ask, always say, God, what is going on? Then wait to answer you. He might not use words, but he will use peace. Amen. Stand to your feet. It's Jesus Christ to love your life. What does that mean? It means this, that I really believe that Jesus Christ came to a virgin's birth as a seed of God, planted by the Holy Spirit. He came in the earth and he lived. He lived a holy life. He became a sacrifice for us, you and I. He had to live a certain way in order for God to receive him as a sacrifice. Sacrificial lamb for our sins. So when he, when he was accounted, when he, had to be, when he had to account for it, by dying and going in the grave, he came up victorious. Victorious. There was no sin found in him. Therefore, he's our Savior. He took our place. He stands in our place right now interceding. Well, to be saved means I believe that. I trust you, God, that Jesus Christ has taken away my sins. And I can have a right relationship with you. So how do I get there? I ask God to forgive me. Then I confess with my mouth. After I ask Jesus, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Once he come in by faith, once you ask him, he comes. Because no man can come to Christ except the Father draw him. And once he's in, you surrender, surrender your life. You don't understand it, but just surrender your life. Let him take over and he'll do what's necessary. So then you confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ, you are the Lord of my life. Father God, I do believe that you Raising from the dead. Therefore, I do have eternal life. Thank you for saving my soul. Amen.